Until recently, most Americans have assumed that our elections are basically honest. But with each election, more and more people are reporting incidents of voter suppression and irregular tallies. As anomalies continue to be uncovered, people realize that voting problems, which had seemed in the past to affect only a few states, could be happening nationwide. In the early morning hours of the 2004 election, reporters were closely monitoring vote totals in the last states to be called. Judy Woodruff, help our viewers understand why we're now going back from the too close to call green column to the white column in which we don't have enough information yet to make any projection. Well, we're trying to figure all this out right now, Wolf. Uh, apparently what has happened is that the Associated Press, they were feeding numbers into us and then suddenly those numbers changed. First of all, we want to find out what happened. What I'm telling you is that uh, the numbers changed and sometimes these things happen. It's simply impossible to validate what happens inside certain electronic voting and counting machines. So one of, one of the ways of uh, checking what's actually happening in this sort of black box vote counting system where it's faith-based voting and you don't know really what's happening would be exit polling. The person comes out of the poll and they, there's somebody there and they say, uh, could we interview you? Mm -hmm. And uh, they, what they do is they give them a ballot basically, and they fill it in. Exit polls are powerful when done right because they tell us the demographics of voting, the attitudes of voting. That's the stuff that we really come to depend on. For the 2004 election, a consortium of broadcast networks hired a polling firm, Edison Mitofsky. There are safeguards in place now. We will be much more careful, we know, as we go throughout the evening tonight, in part because the software is better, the computers are better, and also the analysis will be better. During the day, early exit poll data was leaked to the public and published on the internet. The leaked data revealed that in critical states, Kerry was ahead in the exit polls in 10 of the 12 swing states. John Kerry wins Illinois as expected. He wins Connecticut as well as expected. The District of Columbia, there was never any doubt there. New Jersey, a big win for John Kerry. According to the Washington Post, early evening exit polls pointed to a decisive win for Kerry. Those exit polls showed Kerry holding a lead in states that totaled 309 electoral votes, with Bush's tally totaling 174. After voting sites closed, exit polls being released on the internet showed Kerry ahead, as he had been earlier in the day. During the evening, a discrepancy appeared between the exit polls and the official tallies. Those exit polls showing a Kerry win in Florida, those exit polls showing perhaps a Kerry win in Ohio, and in several other states that have already been called a Kerry margin very different from what the actual results are showing. So what the Bush campaign believes now is that the exit polls were flawed. When there's a difference between exit poll data and the vote count, the exit poll company mathematically adjusts the poll numbers to match the official tally. CNN.com covers Between 10.30 and 11 p.m., Edison Mitofsky's computer server had gone down, and the exit poll numbers remained unadjusted for several hours. As a result of this temporary unintended freeze, election observers were able to download the unadjusted exit poll numbers, showing Kerry still in the lead. I went on the CNN website, and lo and behold, there were all these uh, exit polls uh, broken down in all sorts of various demographic ways, and I set about um, downloading them. So we're looking at the exit polls, and the exit polls clearly showed that uh, John Kerry carried Ohio, which was enough to give him an election, and Iowa, and Nevada, and New Mexico. Until 12.21 a.m., Kerry was still leading, according to the exit polls. The first indication that the apparent Democratic victory might not happen as projected had come around midnight when ABC, CBS, CNN, and Fox News all called Florida for Bush. 
And then something happened where the next time it was put on the screen, the percentages and the numbers, it was exactly flipped. Exit polls developed in the late 1960s for years and years were regarded as very accurate and reliable indicators of how an election would turn out. Exit polls in recent years have become increasingly inaccurate. Exit polls, before they were adjusted, had pointed toward a Kerry victory. The official vote tally reflected a Bush victory. A 3% decrease for Kerry and a 3% increase for Bush equals a 6% discrepancy in the margin of victory. In the early morning hours, when the backup server reconnected and exit poll adjustments resumed, observers watched a dramatic shift. From that point on, exit polls now mirrored the vote count and projected George Bush as the winner. People in the room got quiet. It was funny, because we were all observing this on our own, but, as, but collectively, we knew something wasn't right. Bush took the lead in the national popular vote as Kerry's projected wins in key states were disappearing. How did hundreds and hundreds of thousands of votes shift, not in a progressive, incremental way, but in this almost complete, sudden, violent reversal? Remember, at the time these shifts are occurring, the people in lines are overwhelmingly uh, African-American citizens and college students at liberal campuses. If anything, the shift should be going in the other direction. Very close race. Could still go either way. What's the mood there? Confident, John. The president is thrilled he will be leading the country for the next few years. It's a little early to say he will be. The numbers really aren't in yet. The numbers? John. This is not a man who is going to let the numbers stand in the way of moving America forward. They're in Karl Rove's office, several senior staffers, and they're calling into the states. They're clicking up on these counties, looking at the results come in. And the president himself popped in a short time ago and said, what's the holdup? The motorcade is on the other side of the White House. It is gassed up and ready to go. At about um, 2 a.m., MSNBC called the vote. And we were dumbfounded. We knew that there were people still voting, that they were still online to vote, that there were nine to 15 hour waits that were still happening. And they were calling the vote. And I couldn't believe this. I was shocked. Twelve full hours after the last poll closings of election 2004, there's now an undisputed winner. The Democratic candidate for president, John F. Kerry, has conceded the race in a phone call to the Republican incumbent, President George W. Bush. Earlier today, uh, I spoke to President Bush and I offered him and Laura our congratulations on their victory. I think today there is more sadness than there is anger. They're just feeling pretty sad about the whole thing because, as Jeff said, they've, and we've watched them, they have given their all. I didn't anticipate this. I don't think any of us did. Uh, the, the, we looked at the polls over the last few weeks. Conventional wisdom was the president gets 48, 49 percent in the final polls. He's not going to get much more than that, maybe 1 percent more right. in the actual election. He got way over that, and I think that left everyone sort of puzzled. What the heck happened? I think there's going to be a lot of hell to pay uh, after all this alleged reform that these numbers were wrong. When you're dealing with statistics, you never get certainty. A discrepancy of 6% is so far outside the margin of error of that poll that statisticians across the board will give you general agreement that it could not occur as a matter of chance or statistical aberration.